So, hi, I'm Lola Elfman. I'm the founder and CEO of Develop Well. We are a management and leadership training and coaching practice. Um, we work with amazing organizations and leaders and coaching and training and doing all of this fun stuff. And um, one of the most common questions that we have from folks are about just how to not micromanage, how to manage our time as leaders, how to juggle all of the things. And especially in the last six and seven months when we've been at home, we've been homeschooling, we've been doing all of the things, or if we have been supporting people who are doing those things, how do we balance that? So some of the things I was gonna talk about when I first presented this idea to Netroots um, are actually pretty much the same. It's really getting back to basics. So that's what we're going to go to because I think it's just really about keeping it simple. So we're going to we're going to talk about a few of those things. Um, I will say the Q and A feature of um, Zoom is it's too hard to go between that and chat. So feel free to chat. There will be a few times where I'm going to ask you all some questions in the chat. So that's where we'll be, okay? So don't worry about navigating between Q&A and chat. We're just gonna hang out in the chat, okay. Um, so how many of you, and you can give like a plus sign, you know, whatever little numbers, have asked this question of yourself when managing people on your team? Oh yeah, I thought I was clear. Like I thought I said the thing, why aren't they getting it, right? Oh my gosh. Okay, how about this one? Oh yeah, it's easier if I do it myself. Like if you were to count how many times a day you said that, would it be, yeah. All right, how about this one? And this, ooh, this one really stings, kind of gets to the heart. I can't trust anyone else. Ooh, okay, but we wanna trust people and we want people to trust us, right? This one is super hard to admit, Auntie. And so it's, but we have to be real. And when that comes up, we have to say to ourselves, something isn't working. That's a signal. Whenever we ask these questions and say, I thought I was clear, what's not getting through? It's easier if I just do it myself, even if that means at 10, 11, later at night, I can't trust anyone else. That means something has to shift. And that means maybe what you've been saying and doing isn't landing and hey it's okay we've all been there so we're going to go through a couple basic things super basics here the role of a manager just what are managers actually responsible for doing i'm going to give you these three things this is how i'm operating this is my my sort of offering to you as a framework one is to lead and grow people we are responsible for helping people do better to gain more skills, to improve at what they're doing, to grow up in their organizations, or to even grow from being outside of your organization to their next role, right? Having a strong alumni network is really great. We're also here to do excellent work. If you're working on campaigns, if you're doing advocacy work, even if you're just, if you're running a store, right? I'm running a business. We wanna do great work. We wanna feel good about that work. We wanna have success. And part of being a manager is helping to guide people towards that. And then there's the nuts and bolts and there's the checklist items and the like checking PTO and doing expense reports and managing budgets and all that fun stuff. There's the business of the team. And these three things are really the components of what management looks like. And you as a manager are juggling the time of all of these things. So if you're thinking of a pie chart of your time, and how much this is, like, oh, right, I'm not just doing work myself. I'm actually, you know, also leading other people. It takes a lot of time. Okay, so we're going to focus on two of these areas today, which is going to be leading and growing people and doing great work. And what I'm offering here is that delegation and feedback are part of this essential cycle that are part of helping to lead and grow people and to doing great work. They're one and the same. It's a really important balance of the cycle of all of this. So how many of you, when we were asking those questions, delegation is really hard. It's easier if I do it myself, right? I thought I was clear. What else, put in the chat, like what else do you ask yourself 
or like dread about delegation. I'd love to see what anything. Wait a second. Again, reminder, we're going to use the chat box, not the Q&A, because it's too hard to go between the two of them. Why am I still following up? Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. Is it more time to give feedback than do it myself? Can they do it? I know I'm going to get pushback on this project, so I should just do it myself. What if they do it wrong? Oh, good one. Dread following up with criticism. Really nice. Like, uh, I hate when I delegate and it doesn't happen. Reviewing work takes time. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it just takes time. What if they do not follow the instructions? What if they do not follow the instructions? That's like a big what if. We don't know, but maybe they will. Okay, how can I schedule intentional feedback time with all my other tasks as well as theirs? Okay, and last one, this is going to take 10 times longer to get done when I delegate. All right, thank you all of you for offering those um, and that honesty, because that's real, totally real. What if it looks bad on me if they mess up? Oh yeah, Nathan, okay. Um, it's okay, there's trust issues, we're here, we're here for you. Okay, so here's what we're gonna offer. Delegation. So here's a super simple framework for delegation. Say it, oh my gosh. Okay, one, set clear goals and expectations. I cannot tell you how many times when I've done a debrief with people and at the first, at the top line of the debrief, it's what was the goal of this? What were we trying to do? And people go, oh, I don't actually know that we said what the goal was. I was like, oh, okay, we have to start there. That has to be our guiding light for everything. We're saying this is the goal. Here's the expectations. I'm hoping to see three meetings on the calendar with these people set up with this thing. I need to see the meeting room set up this way. I need to see a draft of a report with this formatting that looks like the report we did the last time, right? You're naming that. And then you're saying, okay, for you to do this, what do you need to be successful? Do you need an example? Do you need someone else to walk you through it? Do you need support of some kind? Do you need, how much time do you need, okay? You're asking the other person who you're delegating to what they think they need because someone being delegated to may be nervous about all the things you just said. What if they don't trust me? What if they wanna do it themselves? All that stuff. So you, you're opening up that, that door, a little bit of vulnerability, okay? And then the last one is you will check in on progress on blank. So you're agreeing as part of delegation about when you're going to check in together. And guess what? You're going to do that frequently, okay? <laughs> Early and often so that you can check in and make sure things aren't off track, right? That if the plane took off here and it starts going this way, you can get it back in gear, okay? So as part of this, remember the cycle was that we delegation and feedback are part of both growing people and doing great work. So here's the pieces of feedback that are going to be really critical. And this is where you're going to ace feedback. Okay. Number one, acknowledge and appreciate the process and the progress and the effort and what people are doing. And you're going to do this early and often and do it a lot. Okay. We're going to talk about how to do this in a second. The second is to coach and clarify. And what I heard and what a lot of you were saying is, oh, I'm dreading criticism. I, you know, what if I follow up, need to follow up? Do I have to schedule intentional feedback? Yes, you do. All of those things, okay? This is how you're going to make sure that the project is going in the right direction and that you don't have to micromanage. And at the end of this, there'll be an evaluation and an assessment of the person's growth and of the outcomes. We're gonna focus on the acknowledging and the coaching part for today, okay? So get your, get your typing ready, because we're gonna do that. So here's my, my other offering to you, is that feedback happens every day, all day long. You are gonna have opportunities today to give people feedback. And here's the thing, the more frequently we give feedback, and that counts as appreciation, acknowledgement, coaching, clarifying. It's not just waiting for someone's annual review. We don't wait and bottle it up, right? If we make it a practice every day, it actually becomes less of a big deal for us. 
in the givers of the feedback and definitely less of a big deal for us as we receive it or other people as we receive it. This little show of plus signs in here, how many of you dread or fear or are nervous about receiving feedback as much or more if giving feedback? I know this is vulnerable, I'm asking you to <laughs> do this, but if you, if it makes you nervous to accept and to hear and receive feedback, yeah, it's, it's tough. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna go start with coaching and clarifying here. So here's a couple questions that I'm gonna offer you. And I wanna ask you what you notice about how, what these questions are. I wish we were could talk and just say it, but in the chat box, you just say, what do you notice about these questions? So one, is everything going okay? Do you need anything? Will you be on time? Are you all good? What do you notice there? I know, sorry. They're yes or no questions. They're kind of not too specific. They're a little too general. They're focused on recipient needs. Okay, the main thing here is that they are yes or no questions. And so if I were to ask someone who I delegate a big project to, hey, is everything going okay? Yeah, totally, it's great. I actually don't have any information there. Do you need anything? No. If someone says, if you're, if you're asked, hey, do you need anything? And you like wanna show off to your manager and be like, I don't wanna look vulnerable or look like I can't do this. So I'm not gonna say that I need something. No is a very easy answer, but actually they may need something, okay? Will you be on time? Yeah. Ooh. Are, you, are you as a delegator really confident in that? Maybe not. So here are some better questions. What is going well? What is a challenge? That asks for an open answer. What will help you be successful? That's another one where someone says, okay, to be successful, I need so-and-so to look at this. I could use your eyes on this draft. I could use training on how to do Excel. I'm having a hard time with that pivot table. Okay, all of these things, they get more specific. How much time is needed to reach the goal? There might be some other ways to ask that one. And what's clear is sort of like, you got this is, what are your next steps? What are the next things? So in the chat, I'd love to know, what are some other open questions like this that you might ask? And here's some tips. You wanna avoid yes and no questions. You actually wanna avoid asking why questions because why imposes a judgment on people. We don't, there's not a judgment like, why are you doing that, okay? You wanna ask, tell me more questions. What and how questions are really great. In all of this, it's also about restating the goal. Yeah, what can I help you do to achieve X, Y, and Z? Perfect, Ariel, awesome. What else might you might ask? How can I support you? Yeah, and you can even ask in the how can I support you? How can I support you in doing this part of the, the task or in achieving this goal or, right? So you can get really specific in doing that. The other piece here, there's sort of the problem solving and prescribing, which if you are an expert, if you've been doing this for a long time, you may know right off the bat, your instinct is how to do this. But you also wanna let them identify action steps. And that's why we have that question. I'm just gonna go back for a second which is, um, oh, I went forward, not backward. What are your next steps? Is that you as a manager asking them, hey, what are you going to do next? You're helping them own it. And if their next step is not the one you would take, that's a point of clarification. You can be like, that sounds great. I'm gonna offer that first. Maybe you tried this too. Or if it's not, here's another thing. I didn't put this in. I'm gonna add this for the next slide. There's the difference between offering a piece of advice, like a use it or lose it advice, versus a suggestion. And so I want you as a manager, as someone who is overseeing the growth of people and the doing of great work, to be extra clear about when you are asking for something very specific, I need this done specifically, it needs to look like this, and an offering of, 
one way you could try it is to use purple text, but use it or lose it. See what it looks like. That's very different. Okay, cool. Yes, no. Um, yeah, so the scary part, there's a question, there's a comment in here about open end questions is sometimes I don't have the capacity to actually help them with what they need. And that is fair. And I think what we need to say is that you get to be honest here. It is not just a, you know, kid in a candy store gets whatever they want. I mean, you don't want kids in candy stores to have it. You do want to be realistic and say, okay, I hear that. Here's what I can offer or here's what is available. What can you do with that? And that's being real and honest and early on. And it, that's the point where you both agree, maybe this person doesn't have the skills they need or they need someone else, or you need to bring in additional capacity. At least you found that out early, okay? And you can be real with your own capacity. That pie chart of your time is some real business, okay? Gotcha, got your back. All right, so we're gonna go to the next little bit of um, feedback here. So acknowledge and appreciate. Again, here are some, some ways that one could acknowledge. Maybe you've said these. These aren't particularly bad. Like, oh, great job. Jane wrote a good email. You're really nice. Um, that project last year was good. Okay, so you're getting a sense. We're going to do the same thing here. What's sort of missing about these? about this way of acknowledging and appreciating people or work. They're non-specific. Yeah, that's like the one. Um, okay, so any, before I show you my suggestions, what might be some other ways, maybe use an example from your own life about how to say to someone that they've done a great job or to comment about someone's work, uh, you know, that they wrote a good email or did something well. How might you, how might you write that? Think of someone who you want to acknowledge or appreciate on your team. You don't have to put their real name in here for sake of anonymity, that's okay. I like how you did X and it was improved from the last time you did something like this. Excellent example. The detail you shared in that email was especially helpful for planning that meeting. Thank you. Really nice. All right, we'll go with those. So those are pretty close to what I have here, actually. Um, so you wrote a really strong proposal. The outlines and examples really impressed the client. It's being really specific. It's saying what they did, what they, you know, maybe where they improved from last time, what they did here. Um, when you did X and we had Y outcome, you didn't see directly. Okay, that's one way. So Jane, the email you wrote was clear and had strong call to action. Nice work. This third one, you know, that was the one where I said like, so-and-so is a nice guy, nice person. Um, here's what that actually looks like is thank you for taking initiative to help the logistics team. Like, thanks for going out of your way. That was much appreciated. I'm gonna tell you what I mean by that in a second. And then this project we just wrapped up was a huge success. Here's how each team or person contributed. So you're calling it in the moment. You can see the difference here. It's all about specificity, okay? So what um, the key to acknowledgement and appreciation here is say to be soft, to be specific. You all nailed that on the head here. Um, to offer to the person directly as much as possible we want to hear it ourselves. We want other people to know it too. Sometimes it's really important as a manager to make sure that other folks are seeing and hearing about how uh, others are doing and improving. And that's good, but you also want that person to know it from you directly. Um, and what I mentioned in that third one where it was like, so-and-so is a nice person and now, hey, here's the thing you did. You want to fo focus on actions of people, not on personality traits. What they did was great, was helpful. They took initiative. They were generous with their time. They contributed in a, mean, in a great way. The personality traits is not what they're gonna ultimately be evaluated on, it's their actions. And so this is a really key moment to notice that. And then like we said, timely, it's in the moment. You will have things at your review. If you think about it this way, if you are giving feedback 
on a regular basis. And that's acknowledging as well as coaching. By the time you get to someone's review, if you're doing it six months at 12 months, right? Hopefully no more than that. Like you're doing it that frequently. You've actually accumulated all of this awesome data about this person and what their growth journey has looked like. It's actually going to make your annual reviews be easier because you've been having this conversation over time, every day. Okay, cool. So here's where we're going to get into a little bit of your own action planning. Hopefully some of your wheels are turning a little bit about, okay, how will I give feedback today? How and where can this show up? So I want you right now, if you have a pen and paper, if you have a notepad that you're typing on, um, we're going to think through a couple places. So who, what, where, when? Think of your team. Okay, so just get comfortable for a second. Think of your team. Think of the folks around you. It doesn't even have to be someone who you manage. It may be someone who you partner with. It may be a consultant or a vendor or you know, a partner in the field. That's cool too. Um, everyone loves getting appreciation here. Um, coaching may be a little different with external people, but think about the folks who you interact with and you manage and you oversee every day. And think about what they might need to hear from you right now. Okay, maybe that's an appreciation. Maybe that is a bit of coaching. Maybe you do need to go into okay, I got to give some feedback on here. I need to dig into what's happening on this project. My spidey sense is that something's off. Maybe it is actually that you need to delegate and open up and share some responsibility. Okay, we have a few in mind. So just write down a little bit. I will appreciate the name of this person, so-and-so, for doing this. And when are you going to do it? This is the key part. So what I would love to know, to, to just chat right here, is just if there's a few, um, I, before we, I would do want people to share out this. When and where are opportunities for you or anyone on your team to be giving feedback? What are sort of the natural built-in moments when you can give them feedback? I would love to see that in the, in the chat box. Team meetings. Yep. Oh, didn't mean to go back. Team meetings, where else? One on ones. Yep. Impromptu calls. What else? There's Slack, there's email, there's your calls. Yep, text, team chats, and your work from home world. That is for sure. Giving thanks during an event, absolutely. I know this is really contextual. It's hard for me to say, hey, here's the exact script of when and where to do it. It is about thinking through in your work, in your cadence, in your ecosystem of your workplace, especially now that folks are not in person, it's actually really important more than ever that you are being intentional about this feedback, about showing appreciation and acknowledgement and about coaching because there's not that like ability to just get up and walk around or have the face-to-face -face meeting. It's so planned. It's so like right here in your face. Yeah. Um, and this is a really good point, actually. Thank you, Margit, for saying this. Is I feel like public recognition can be good, it can, but if you only give public recognition and not one-on-one -on -one feedback, then the public recognition can ring false. I think that's a really important point. That's why I was asking, when and where can you do this in all these places? There is that point for open feedback, and it's, there's also that someone just needs to hear it directly. Um, I will also offer that I think it's really important to put things in writing um, so that, one, you have a record for your review, and also if you ever have a performance issue with someone, right, if you're giving feedback that's like, hey, you're not hitting the mark, I need you to do this, and that keeps happening over time, you do have a record of that, 
And it's super helpful when delegating. You have a conversation and say, Can you, I'd like you to follow up with an email after this with what your next steps are. It gives you both a shared place to look at that. Okay, so what I'd love to do, and then we're gonna go into Q&A. We have lots of time for Q&A, okay? Is just each set an intention for if you're gonna appreciate someone, if you're gonna coach someone, if you're gonna delegate someone, just fill in your sentence here and share it. And it's okay if you anonymize it a little bit. I just wanna hear this from all of you that you are going to help give feedback. And this is what's gonna help you not micromanage your team. Okay, who's gonna go first? I believe in you. You can also side private chat me later and we can keep talking about this. When are you going to give someone on your team feedback? I will coach Jay about time management during our meeting next week. Love it. Great intention. Anyone else? Is anyone here going to ask for feedback? Maybe it's not a, as scary now. I'd love to know that. I will acknowledge my outreach organizer after she hosts an event online tonight. That'll be great, Kat. I will appreciate my NRN team for making, taking wonderful notes for us to learn from on our next team call. Love it. Okay, I would love it if people keep sharing this, um, but also write it down for yourself. I think this will be really key. Okay, I will delegate revising an upcoming presentation to tea during our Monday check-in call. Oh, we got a whole bunch coming. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think this, so there's a comment here about um, one thing that's happened since COVID is now meeting with staff every morning via video chat and not doing one-on-ones, but reinstating them. I totally support that. Partially because people need that one-on-one -on -one space. Maybe they don't need to be as long, um, but it's still such like sacred, important time. Um, also, it's a big question of have people had one-on-ones? If there's things going on, one-on-ones are really important. I would say at least every two weeks, try to keep that habit, okay? Um, oh, I love this, Kate. I will ask for feedback from my boss tomorrow about an email I had a direct report writer asking for more accountability. Nice, that's really great, okay. All right, Ariel, this is a great question. So maybe uh, what if the person you manage does not receive feedback well, even when it is delivered in a supportive way? Okay, this is a great question. So we are definitely in the Q&A portion here. So I'm gonna do my best to uh, track these here in the chat. I know there's a Q&A function. It's just a little hard to go back and forth. Okay, so Receiving feedback is super hard. And sometimes what I like to think about before giving feedback is thinking about how I like to receive feedback and what happens and how I'm activated by feedback. Sometimes I'm excited and invigorated because I've gotten appreciation and acknowledgement. Great, they are telling me I'm doing a good job. Okay, now I wanna do more of that. Sometimes though, it will, hit a nerve in me that has to go all to my sense of self-value and self-worth. And I think, oh my God, I formatted that email wrong. I'm a terrible person. I'm going to lose my job. And I snowball. Does that ever happen with you all? Maybe. That happens a lot. So there's things called truth triggers and identity triggers. And what can happen when someone receives feedback is that that's, that is activated in us. So there's a lot of self-management that has to happen. So what I'm offering to you is these ways to regularly provide feedback is actually to help people who may be nervous get more used to hearing it. I saw something and I didn't put it in this presentation because I couldn't verify the numbers, but someone said something like eight, you know, 80% of the feedback that a manager should be giving 
should be like positive or acknowledgement feedback. And I'm not 100% sure on that, but it is one of the things that I think um, is helpful to know, um, to think about just a larger percent needs to be there. So if someone is there, I think you can think about it in a couple ways. Say, hey, I would like to give you some feedback. I would like to talk about this project. Um, I'd like to do it at a time when you can be most uh, prepared for that conversation, okay? So they get a sense of what's coming. And they might need some time afterwards, and that's okay. The more you start doing it, it will get a little bit easier. And again, every case is, is a, unique. So we'll go there. Okay. So um, I'm going to look here for any other questions. Um, any other questions? What other questions can we cover about feedback, about delegation, about management? Um, tips on delegating. Okay. Well, I'll just, I'll go back to the, um, the delegating slide here. Do, do, do. And by the way, I am more than happy to share this presentation with all of you. Um, okay, tips on delegating, then we'll talk about the idea of sandwiching, and then we'll talk about maybe the control issue. Okay, so just a review on delegating. Delegating, I'm actually going to go back a couple more slides because here's what I just really want to reiterate here is that delegating again is helping lead and grow people. Sometimes when you are creating space for other people to do something new, to take on a kind of project or take on a new skill or responsibility, you are in fact letting go of something. And this goes a little bit to the control thing that someone just met, mentioned. It's totally true, right? I asked you at the beginning, like, what if I don't trust people to do this? Well, that is totally the case. There has to be a little bit of trust. And part of this is that you're going to delegate and you're going to give lots of feedback. But the only way people on your team are going to get better at doing things that you need to do great work is to get practice doing those things. And it doesn't mean you throw them in the deep end. It doesn't mean they get, you know, all of it themselves right away. It does mean that you take baby steps and you say, first, we're going to start here. We're going to try this. We're going to check in. That's going well. We're going to go to this phase. So if we take an example of um, like being on a client call, right? I do a lot of consulting. So with someone coming on my team, I'm going to have them shadow and be part of client calls and just watching, maybe taking notes. Then maybe after a little bit, I'm going to have them contribute on a few of the things that they're working on and talk on that call, right, until they're good and maybe start sending them emails. But I'm going to read those emails before they send them. And then once we get all comfortable with that and I trust their voice and how they're engaging, they're going to start sending emails directly to the client, doing back and forth. They might lead whole portions of the meeting. Eventually, they may lead the meeting without me if I can't be on there. But I'm not going to jump to that part right at, at the start, right? They're just not ready. It's not fair to them. And I can't trust them, right? And that's okay. I just have to be real about that. Okay. So that I think gets to a little bit of it. I want to talk about this idea of sandwiching feedback. There's a lot of debate on whether you should give a, you know, nice, you know, nice feedback, the hard feedback, nice feedback again. It can go back and forth. I think it is important to acknowledge and go back to, we were trying to achieve this goal. This is what we were trying to do. And acknowledge where someone did do work well. You project managed really well. You did the main outline of this project excellently. It was very clear. But what wasn't as clear was your follow-up on this particular event, right? There you are being specific you are giving them some guidance of this went okay, but you're acknowledging where something didn't go okay. That's helpful for someone to know, oh, I need to apply the skills over here where I did something well to this part where maybe I wasn't as strong, okay? So that's the difference there. If you are just like throwing flowers at someone just to like be nice and shiny in order to deliver like really hard news, that's not fair to them, okay? 
it needs to be authentic. And that's my opinion. And that's what I, I've seen work well. Um, I would love to get into a non-typing chat with people about this at some point, but um, yeah. So, okay. Um, I see a couple to questions here about how to manage when you're in no way qualified or you don't have any training and resources. Okay, well, number one, I would love to talk with you. And at the end of this, I'm gonna give you my email and I would love it if you would email me, please, please, please do. Um, in addition to the work that I do at Develop Well, there are other really great resources. There is the Management Center, there's Life Labs. Um, there's some really great things. And that's hard when you're like, I'm doing this on my own. Um, you don't have to do it on your own. And there's people who are going to help coach you, promise. There's trainings, there's coaching, it's there. What I will say though, in a summary, is to go back to um, what I offered here at the beginning, which is that the main pieces, the role of a manager is to lead people, to do great work, to manage the work, and to run the business of your team. And sometimes you have an additional layer of doing the work yourself, and that can be hard. I wanna recognize that. That's a lot to manage, especially now when folks are working from home. Maybe you have kids, maybe you are supporting staff members of, and colleagues of yours who have kids, even if you don't. It's just wacky. Um, but these are the most essential things. Being clear about what you expect, being clear about what you need to be successful and what other people need to be successful is going to be really helpful. And this might sound super basic, but just being nice, like for real and saying, I'm having a hard day. I might not show up as well as I want to show up today. That's okay. Right. I do it too. I had to do it the other day. I was like, I can't deal with this. Um, so that's where we're at. Okay. So, um, I see, yeah, some symptom of nonprofit work. Often people get promoted without any support or training. I could go on a whole tangent <laughs> about um, how people are promoted without getting the support. Um, as much as you can advocate for yourself, there are some great resources and trainings um, to get that support and to ask, what are people being expected to do? How are they being assessed? What am I responsible for doing for them? I recognize it's hard, but it's, it's in there, okay? Keep it basic, keep it simple. All right, we have a few more minutes. I would love to know if there's any other questions about management, about leadership, about team culture. I like to nerd out about this stuff. Oh, I did see a question about how to do the pre um, get a copy of the presentation. After this, I'm gonna give you, in fact, I'll just go to my last slide now. And that is my email. Um, I'm at developwell.org or lola at developwell.org is my email. And um, really, please, please, please email me. Um, would love to chat. I even have a separate Slack uh, set up for external folks that we do trainings with and building that out. So if you're on Slack, you wanna have access to me, would love to do that. Um, and okay, well, I see a couple things here. So any tips with dealing with staff who disagree with your feedback? Okay, that's really great. So the first question I would ask in that is, where is the disagreement? Where is there misalignment on things? What, and go back to what was the expectation from the beginning? Did you both understand what the outcome was supposed to be? Did you understand what something was supposed to happen? Um, is this, you know, maybe is this a little bit of personality? There's a little thing here, like a history. Um, it helps to get back to the basics. It's a really great book. Um, well, Douglas Stone has written both Thanks for the Feedback and Difficult Conversations. Um, I like both books for very different reasons, but in the Difficult Conversations book, he has a really great template for basically getting to a neutral place of assessing a situation and an event of what happened so that you can understand where both parties are coming from. And I think that can be really helpful when thinking about 
a disagreement on feedback to be like, oh, they're coming from this point of view and this perspective. And I'm coming from this point of view and this perspective. And so I think pulling that apart can help a little bit. Um, it if, if it is someone who is just gonna like fight you all the time, I think there's a different conversation about their role and the work and what's happening, but I don't wanna like assume too much in that. Okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna keep going. So I have a direct report that is angsting out and about working her first political client and she keeps calling her other colleague who reports to me multiple times after hours during the week. Woo, okay. Um, so office hours, what do office hours mean anymore? It's very, um, uh, the Dowager Countess from uh, Downton Abbey, what's a weekend, right? Um, it's actually really important right now that we set these boundaries and set those expectations of what is appropriate and not. I know you're probably thinking, Kate, like, okay, yeah, duh. But at this point, what I would say is that there's likely something to say, I hear that you need to vent. Or it sounds like maybe you need to vent. There's an appropriate way to do that. And then there's a way that we're having a real conversation about the workplace and what we're doing here. And the appropriate time to do that is in these working hours. And I will say that offering that some people are gonna have different working hours. Some people may say, I'm working from 3 p.m. till 9 p.m., okay? That's okay, then it's, it's in their designated work hours. But we're gonna, you know, you may have to shift that. So bringing that down and saying, if this continues, that's really disruptive to your peers. Um, and we need to address that. And I think that's an okay, very honest thing to say to someone and to ask them what else is going on here i'd like to know more there seems to be something really bothering you and pull that apart okay sometimes it's like there's something else here okay i know kate that may not be a super satisfying answer i'm feeling a little rushed because of the time but please do email me we can chat more if that's helpful um okay any tips on well, move any tips on dealing with fellow organizers who seem to dismiss you since you are less experienced than them or assume you don't have something valuable to add. I know this is kind of flipping the script. Okay. So whew, that's a good one. Um, so much here is about, I think, clarity and specificity in your actions and intentions. And in some ways it's like, you know what Michelle Obama is like, when they go low, oh, we go high. How are you showing up in different ways? How are you reaching out to people and supporting people within your organization and on your team who are, need that support and maybe aren't getting it from these other folks? It's a little bit of redirect and just kind of like, you know what, we're gonna go through this. I'm gonna do my own, my thing. Um, because you know how you're good. You know what you're able to do. I keep doing that and support other people. You get to create a culture that it, other people are gonna wanna be a part of. And I firmly, I believe that, so. Um, if they assume that you don't have something valuable to add, that is on them. <laughs> it, it's you to just keep doing the value add. Really, I believe in that, okay. Um, other quick questions. Do, do, do. Oh, how do you rebuild trust on a team if it starts to become lost by poor management? Oh, Christopher, that kind of breaks my heart. Team culture is such an important thing. Um, there's a graphic that I use that I didn't include on here, but uh, I think it's on my Instagram actually. Um, that's group culture and individual action and how it just keeps cycling. They influence one another over and over. What I would do, Christopher, is focus on the individuals on your team. Set up a one-on-one, -on -one, set up a coffee date, how are they doing? What do they need? Just open up some, some dialogue and just ah, some breathing space. Chances are, if the team culture is not there, that people need some of that connection. It's that glue. So just creating some space. Um, there's all these like fun things you can do. We've been creating a playlist on our team. It's been super fun. Um, but sometimes it's just like having a walk and talk coffee chat, just giving people some of that space and some of that attention is going to go really far. And one of the questions you can ask is sort of like the delegating question, what do you need to be successful? What do you need to be supported? How can I help you? And they might not know in that moment 
but they will really, really appreciate being asked, like really a lot. Um, you probably want to be asked that. So for all of you, how can I be supportive? How can I support you? How can you be happier in your jobs and successful? I would love to know. I'd love to keep talking about it. So please do reach out. Ooh, and my favorite piece of positive feedback. Mm, um, I mean, like for myself or for other people, I don't know. It's really hard. Um, I, I mean, I personally like to know when I've had, um, I've been doing a training and this kind of development for like 15, 20 years. <laughs> I, I do like to know when it has helped people, not just like immediately afterwards, but down the road. Um, for me, that's kind of a nice thing. I do like the immediate feedback. So if you want to tell me this was a good presentation, I'll take it. But um, I do like to know even down the line that um, my support impacted someone. And I think other people like to know that too, that there was um, uh, a legacy to their work. So right? you probably all want to know that too. The campaign you worked on, that project you did, it had an impact. So I want to thank you all for jumping on, for being part of Netroots Nation at home. This is really amazing what they've been able to do here. Um, this is big stuff, really cool. Um, so I would love to just, you know, in your, in the chat before you go, please say goodbye. Please, you know, give some feedback. <laughs> and um, if you email me, I will definitely um, uh, send you this presentation. I may post it on my Facebook too. So, all right. Thank you all. Have a great rest of your Netroots Nation. You're doing awesome. Okay. And I'm not sure when we're going to get kicked out, but um, yeah, happy net roots. Have fun. It's going to be awesome. Are you all, I hope you're all hanging out for the, um, the plenaries. There's some really cool speakers. I'm excited for this. So, um, all right. But I'm not sure when they kick us out. So I'm going to just keep hanging out here until they actually, actually kick us out. When does that happen? 1259. Okay. Just typing in my email there. I'm big on Instagram and not really Facebook and not Twitter at all. So if you're there, um, love to see you there. Cool. Looks like we're losing, we're losing people. So I think we'll just wrap. So this has been super awesome. Thank you everyone. And um, uh, no, my company name is develop well. Yep. And uh, Instagram. Yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs>